And this is the, the kind of the foundational verse, the key verse that uh, we've been talking about. And, and just look at that last little piece, right? And it says, and be thankful. So I'm, uh, I'm thankful that you, you picked up on that and, uh, and shared that with our children. But let's, uh, if, you're, uh, if you can see that screen, uh, I'd encourage you, let's just read these, this verse again together as we, um, as we dive into uh, the message. Let the shalom of Christ, our Messiah, be your heart's decision maker. Since the parts of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's been a, a great opportunity for us to learn, um, you know, about peace. And uh, this morning, I get the privilege to carry on uh, in this series of peace. And, um, you know, over the, over the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been asking the question uh, of you guys, you know, what does peace look like in your life, right? Or how have you experienced God's peace in your life. And you know what, I, I'm not sure how you've answered those questions and, and we put you into little breakout rooms after and some of you talked about and you've shared those stories and that's, that's, that's great. And uh, this morning I want to share, if I can, um, I want to share a couple of uh, the stories that I have experienced, that I have lived through, um, that talk about peace. And I want to talk about, I want to take some scripture this morning, some stories, some imagery from scripture that have helped shape my understanding of God as the author and giver of peace. So that's my goal this morning. And, uh, you know, the other day, Tim and I uh, were meeting and we were discussing uh, what peace looked like for us. And uh, we came to the conclusion that, these, these experiences of peace can be very unique, uh, not just to him and I, but to all of us here this morning. For example, uh, I was talking to him about, um, you know, finding peace in the quiet. So, you know, peace in the quiet, but also peace in chaos. And so, you know, I used to, back in the, a couple of years back, before we moved to Nanaimo, I used to do a fair bit of fly fishing. And I know there's a, a few of you guys out there and, and ladies that like to fly fish. And uh, you know what, there were some early mornings and uh, some, some late evenings where I was the, the last fisherman on the river. And you know what, with, with nobody else around, you know, the only sounds that I could hear were the sounds of the river flowing by, and then the, the gentle, um, mostly gentle passing of the fly line as I cast it out into the water. And, you know, and, and it was in those moments where I felt this incredible sense of peace. And you know what, full disclosure here, um, those were also some times of frustration when that fly line got caught on the tree behind me or snagged on a rock. But there were times where the peace that I felt was just incredible. And you know what? It wasn't just the quiet surroundings, the quietness that, were, that was peaceful for me. It was the fact that here I was, I was standing out in what I believe one of the, the most beautiful parts of God's creation in awe of what he has created and being so thankful that he had given me the opportunity to experience it. We live in an incredible place here on the island. And you know what? Uh, when we get out into God's creation and we just, we have that opportunity to just see what he has created. Wow, what a for me, anyway, that was just that 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 gives me just a, such a great sense of peace about who my God is and what He has done. And so then, you know, when we kind of go back to the flip side, you know, finding uh, peace in chaos. Now that might sound like a bit of an oxymoron, but you know what? Um, I had I ran this by my wife, and she said I could share this story. You know, and you know, every once in a while we have these large family gatherings and when everybody can make it when all the when all the families are together i will admit it can be a little bit chaotic 
You know, the, we've got these little, little kids just running around, having a blast, you know, running everywhere. Then there's, there's some, of, some of the older ones are playing games like Dutch Blitz or something at the kitchen table. And it's just, it's loud. It's, it, they're having a blast. You know, um, the kitchen is always buzzing with activity. You know, there's conversations and laughter coming from every corner of the house. And for me, personally, there are times where I actually kind of need to retreat from all of that noise and kind of collect myself. And so how do I find peace in those moments? Well, you know what? There is a sense of peace knowing that we are a part of a family where everyone gets along and is having a wonderful time together. And I know, I know this isn't the case for every family. You know what? There's, there's, this, there's this sense of peace knowing that as a family, we are all a part of God's bigger family together. A family who has put their hope and their trust in Christ as their Lord and Savior. There's a peace about that when we gather, knowing these things. And you know what? Again, as I said earlier, these experiences can be unique for each and every one of us. And, you know, we are very, very blessed as a family uh, to, to, to be able to have those gatherings and to feel that way. I, as the verse has said, um, I'm thankful. I'm very thankful for those opportunities. And so this morning, uh, I want to look at Scripture, and I want to walk you through uh, just, just some, some short verses that have some story or some imagery that can help us grasp the peace and to understand what the peace is that comes from God himself through Christ. And as I, as I thought about this and I thought, okay, how do we understand what peace is? The first thing that came to my mind is we need to establish through scripture who the author and the giver of peace is this morning. And I chose uh, two verses, and, and the first one uh, uh, makes it very clear. First uh, Thessalonians chapter uh, 5, verse 23, makes this very clear. It says that uh, um, where, where Paul is finishes, finishing his letter to the Thessalonians, so it's a little bit later in the letter, he's, he's talked to them about, you know, telling them to live in peace with one another, and then, and then he pins these words to, in, in his closing. He says, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, your whole soul, your whole body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you might recall from previous weeks, um, as Tim has explained this shalom or this peace, that we're talking so much more than just a simple little definition of uh, of peace from uh, maybe our worldly perspective. There's, a, there's this deep, much deeper connection to the peace that we have from God, as Paul writes, right? As a wholeness. Paul talks about a wholeness of peace in spirit, soul, and body. And as we continue in Paul's, uh, some of Paul's letters, he, he again in, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 you know, again, in near the end of his letter, right, this is quite typical of Paul's writing, uh, in the final word to the church, he, he, to church in Corinth, he writes and encourages, and then he actually instructs the people as well. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another, be of one mind, and he says, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Paul urges the believers here to have the same mindset and purpose, this living in peace. doesn't mean that they're going to agree on absolutely everything, but they live, must live in harmony or in peace with one another. Again, in these words, we see the, the sense that Paul is talking about this complete or full understanding or living in the peace that comes from God. 
So if we take just those two verses, and there's others, uh, especially in Paul's writing and, and others in the New Testament, that, um, that God alone is the source of peace. God alone is the source of peace. So if we move ahead in this message and, and, and in the rest of this series, knowing that God is the source and the giver of peace, how does that help us actually define what peace is? And again, that can be unique for all of us. But uh, there's this beautiful piece of scripture in Isaiah chapter 11 that I want to share with you that is this beautiful image that the prophet is talking about, the prophet Isaiah is talking about, and it relates to peace. And uh, so Isaiah chapter 11, verses 6 through 8, it says that the wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, Their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest and will not be harmed. Isn't this an amazing, beautiful picture of what peace could look like? And of course, as we, if you dig into that deeper, what, what, what does that, what does that mean for us? As, as human beings. He's talking about animals, but I think we can think about that from a bigger picture, a bigger perspective. And we can understand that this peace is something that is pretty incredible. And so verses like this one and, and others that the prophets used to, um, um, in the Old Testament, they were recorded for us and for the people, and they were used in anticipation that God's peace would be delivered through a Messiah. And you can find that all through the Old Testament prophets, that these things, that that there's an anticipation that God's peace would come through the Messiah. So if we we continue on in uh, in Isaiah and just back up a a chapter or two, um, there's some very familiar words uh, for, for many of us there. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. And, uh, you know, it says this, here's, here's what it reads. It says, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. And here in this, in this text, we have this, this promise that this Prince of Peace is coming. The Messiah that we're talking about will come and establish peace on earth Now, this was the cornerstone in the Old Testament. This was the cornerstone of the hope that the remnant of Israel held on to through countless cycles of upheaval and then good times and upheaval that the whole nation faced together. This prophecy and many more in the Old Testament pointed the people of Israel in one direction. It pointed them to Christ. And then we find that fulfilled in the New Testament. Right? The New Testament is filled with the accounts of Jesus' life. The life of the promised Prince of Peace who came to conquer sin and death. The Prince of Peace who came to conquer sin and death to bring peace and to give that peace to all his faithful followers. So this peace that we're talking about is a gift. This peace we're talking about is a gift, a divine gift, one that has been presented to each and every one of us as his followers. So God is the source, the author and the source and giver 
of peace. So peace comes to us when we are in a right and true relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, this, this past summer, as many of you might know, my family said goodbye to my dad as he passed into the presence of the Lord. And you know what? This, this was a difficult time for us. You know, and, and there, were, there were many tears and, and we, will be missed. we will miss him greatly. But you know what? Even in this time, I felt an incredible sense of peace around what happened. I had this peace. And you know what? I've heard people say this before. I've heard them say that they were at peace with a loved one passing. And you know what? To be honest, I really never understood what they meant until I experienced that firsthand. Right? My dad had a personal relationship with Jesus. He has now received his full gift of peace, free from sin, free from the sin that burdened his earthly life, free from the pain that once riddled his body. He is living in peace with Christ today. And you do one of the most, the biggest things, the, the, one of the, the most important things that I've learned from that experience of peace in my own life is that my dad's peace is also my peace. My dad's peace is my peace. It comes from the same source. His peace and my peace comes from the same source. And that is our father in heaven. That, for me, is still, it still is hard to comprehend. But I find I have peace about that, knowing that we have the same Father in heaven who can give us those things. And you know what? One of the things that I remember as a kid growing up was hearing my dad read the Bible uh, to us uh, after dinner. And, you know, I think my dad really enjoyed the Psalms and Um, As I was working through this study on peace, I came across a little little part of Psalm 85. Um, And I want to share that with you. And it says, I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants. but But let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Now, there might be some of the younger ones that go, <laughs> they kind of giggle at that, but you know what? What does this mean? What does this, what does this mean when righteousness and peace kiss each other? Well, this righteousness he talks about is, is the commitment on our behalf to live a life according to God's will through our relationship in Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit. This is a life of faithfulness to God. And as it says in Micah 6 verse 8, it's to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with him. It's to be obedient to his commands, to be upright, to be loyal, to be blameless, knowing full well that when we fail, because we will, it is only by his grace that we can pick up in the next minute, the next hour or day to be renewed by him to carry on the work of sharing his good news, this good news with others. 
you know, oftentimes in our services as a church, and it's, uh, in, in a way, it's, it's part of our tradition in a sense, we often close our services with a benediction or a blessing. And most often, these blessings that we say, or these benedictions that we do, they include a word about peace. And I want to share a couple of those with you, some of the ones that I've used in the past, and, and some that many other churches do as well. Romans 15, verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We, we read from Ephesians chapter 6, Peace to the brothers and sisters, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Hebrews 13 is another one. It says, Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. So when you take a look at all three of these verses, when you take them and you, you put them side by side, I think you have to understand that there's, there's this great connection that we need to see. And as we think about the peace of God that comes through Jesus, these words, these verses help us draw an important line of connection to the peace that we receive and the relationship to Jesus that we have to have, that we must have to receive it. So each of these benedictions are a word of instruction. They're a word of encouragement for us today. Something for us to bring, um, to, something for us to bring with us into the week ahead. It's kind of like they're, they're meant to help us kind of put the wind in our sails and let us kind of go into the week knowing that through our relationship that we have in Christ, we will also have this peace that comes from God. You know, I, I, I was studying, I, I'm reading scripture and, 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 and looking up, what is this peace? And, you know, so my intention to deliver today was to help you learn more about peace. And then all of a sudden I run up against this verse in Philippians 4, verse 7. And it says that the peace of God, which transcends or surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. And I thought to myself, well, how do I grasp something that's beyond my understanding? And you know what? Are we going to cover everything we need to know about peace in, in the next couple of weeks as we worship and learn together, as, as Pastor Tim will share over the next two weeks a little bit more about this peace, the shalom of Christ, our Messiah? Well, as the Bible also tells us, there will always be a mystery around knowing everything, knowing the grand purpose behind the things that God has planned for us. When I look back at this verse in, in, in Philippians 4, verse 7, uh, it's also an encouragement. It's, it's, it's that we're not alone, right? That this peace of God will guard our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ. He is with you. He is with us together as a church. And so in Jesus, we have one another to lean on and to listen to. You know, today I, I shared a couple of, just a couple of examples of, of the peace that I have felt in different times of my life. And and I'm sure that some of you have had similar accounts. I've talked to some of, some of you, and I've heard the stories. And actually, I've talked to some that are actually fly fishermen, you know, and have been out on the river and have experienced that peace and that just that understanding of how great God is when you're standing there on the river. 
we have all been created to be in relationship with Christ. And so we've asked the questions, we've, we've gone into breakout rooms, we've, we've said, share those stories of peace with one another. And today we're going to have another opportunity to do that after the service, after we're finished singing and we do our benediction and we give the blessing, we'll say goodbye to one another. And for those who want to stick around, let's share those stories of peace together. Because when we share together, we're growing together. It's a part of who we are. It's a part of the DNA of our church to build one another up through sharing these things together. Today, we're, we're going we're gonna to close our service in just a couple of minutes. And we're going to close our service with a song that is titled The Blessing. Many of you have heard it. I, I know you, you've heard it. A lot of you have shared it with, with others through, through online and social media and, and email. And, you know, but today, when we sing this song, when we, when we hear the words of this song, I want you to consider for a moment, take some pause and listen to the words, and consider what it means to you today when the, Lord, when, when, when the words are sung, when, when we hear these words, when the Lord turns his face towards you and gives you peace. What does that mean for you today? So these words come from Numbers chapter 6, and I want you to listen. I'm going to use these same words to close after the, after the song. I'll, I'll use the exact same words. And I want that to be your encouragement. I want that to be your peace today. That you know that God, when he turns his face towards you, he will give you peace. Now, if you don't yet have that relationship, you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I also encourage you to take some time and think about that. Think about how you can have that peace, the peace of God, the, the author, the creator, and the giver of peace. You can have that. And I would encourage you to reach out to somebody today. You can call me. You can call to Pastor Tim. You can call a friend. Maybe you're here with somebody who invited you. I encourage you to talk to that person today about that relationship that you can have and the peace that comes from knowing Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So I'm going to ask John Mark to, to play that video, and I want to close by singing together the blessing. So let's do that this morning together. Stick around after if you like and be a part of the breakout rooms. Tim will set that up for us in just a moment. Uh, we lost you. Oh. Oh, Sorry, it's me. Sorry, you guys hear me? Oh, it's okay, Steve. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's uh, uh, as a church today, as a, as a, as God's family, we're we're a church that is scattered across the city uh, this morning. But to share, but we can share this morning this blessing. So, if you're with us and you want to stand to receive God's benediction, this blessing this morning, I encourage you to do that. If not, that's fine. But here we are together as God's church. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Go this week in peace. Amen.